I don't have four wheel steering. This is just a broken tie rod in the back. Oh yeah! Welcome back to part two of the Savage XL K5.9. I had no time to do a proper video intro, so I'm doing it on my way back home from work. But don't you worry guys, it's gonna be a lot of exciting stuff. Let's get into the engine, we're gonna open it up, and at the end, I guarantee you, I will be starting this up. It's Halloween right now, there's weirdos of all sorts, including people like me walking around with a camera yelling because it's just so loud. You see right there in the back? That's my bus, I'm about to get on. Hopefully there's a seat. On any Nitro RC where I don't know the condition, I always remove the coolant head before I spin over the crankshaft, do the pull start, do anything. You need to know whether this thing is seized. This is the best way of avoiding catastrophe. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove this cooling head. We're gonna check out if everything is okay. I'm gonna put in some after run oil and then we're gonna try to spin the engine over. All the screws are out. None of them were stripped, thank God. Let's remove the cooling head. Okay, I see a little bit of oil inside. It does not look bad. Um, that slight dirtiness on the piston is absolutely normal. Let's see if I could spin this over. Okay, yeah, it's actually really, really smooth. You guys see that moving up and down? I got a giant screwdriver. I don't have the roto start wand now. The piston seems to be moving freely, absolutely no issues at all. You gotta be careful not to push this uh, cylinder sleeve out. There is also a shim here on top. Let me put in some after run oil here just in case. About uh, eight drops or however much you want, like I just did, should be fine. This will lubricate the engine you know, and do a good job, maybe even free it up a little bit, but there's absolutely no issues at all inside. Glow plug seems to be in relatively okay condition. I just wanna see if it glows. Let me put on the glow start. And yep, it is pretty red. I could see it right over here. It is red inside. Glow plug seems to be good. To show you guys the reality of how huge a .36 engine is. I have another vintage RC. This is a Thunder Tiger I'm working on restoring. This one is seized, so I'm not too worried about it. This is a .15 size engine. Do you guys see how huge this .36 is compared to this .15? This is basically uh, the big bad boy of the RC world right over here. This is the largest you can get in the factory ready to run, unless you're talking about the .70 Thunder Tiger EK4. Yes. I do know my Nitro RC history. This is another future project I will be working on. This one is completely seized. I cannot spin it with my uh, finger at all, but the piston itself looks to be okay. This needs a lot of work. For now, let me close this up. Now I'm gonna remove the air filter. We're gonna check out the carb. Okay, I see that it already has an included factory restrictor. I think this piece right here should be able to come out. Okay. Here we go, this is the factory restrictor. Its main goal is to reduce some of the airflow going into the carburetor under full throttle. I'm not quite sure how much horsepower this actually robs or if the 3.75 horsepower claim is with or without this, but it seems to be pretty cool. I'm gonna put it in for now. We're gonna, in the future, do some testing with and without this thing on. Here's a look inside the carb with the restrictor removed. On the full throttle, you guys can see I'm pressing full throttle right over here on the remote. It's still not opening up the Venturi all the way. It's almost there, but other than that, it looks pretty clean. It slides simple. I don't see any rust inside at all. This is a good sign. Maybe that fuel that it ran uh, was pretty good after all. Now I'm gonna attempt to open the transmission case to check out the three-speed transmission. First thing I did is remove the roll bar on top here, just four screws, two on each side. You also have three screws holding the top of the transmission housing. Technically, these three screws are all it takes. I should be able to lift this thing out and we can look at the three gears inside. Yep, there we go. Got it out, so three screws only. That's all it took to remove the top cover of the transmission. Here it is guys, the crown jewel of the Savage XL, the three gear transmission. They are all, uh, let's see, this looks like a plastic gear, this one. This is metal, metal. Yeah, this is plastic. Uh, this is probably first gear, second, and third. This has to be the first gear, yeah, as I spin it. Right, there we go. So these are not engaged. This is first gear. The reason is, as I move it forward like this, the truck is going forward. Now, if I move this one, it's not engaging. If I move this one, it's not engaging. 
because the clutches inside are not currently engaged. So this is correct, we are in first gear. Here is the inside of the transmission housing. Our spur gear is metal, it's steel. All the gears inside here are also steel. Once again, you know, they match up to the three gears here. First, second, third. I'm just surprised that this is actually plastic. No one's actually pointed this out so far. Would you like a smoke and a pancake? A what? A smoke and a pancake. You know. Can I offer you something? Cup of noodles and DJI Phantom drone? No? Okay. Flapjack and a cigarette? Hmm? All right. Rice Krispies treat and Losi Mini 8? Sugar and a waffle? No. Cereal and two-stroke racing oil? Pipe and a crepe? No. Wong and a blintz? No. Oh, well, then there is no pleasing you. The hot new WL Toys 14401? Oh, you want that? Okay, no problem. This is the hot new WL Toys that every single YouTuber is getting, and I also got one. This one has a lot to offer. My channel is not like any other. I have a whole bunch of RCs. I'm the RC Guru Historian, and I also have a Low C Mini 8. This is an electric version. I will be comparing it to this model in the future. I don't know if anyone else has done it. Since I am the RC capitalist, I was able to negotiate a deal with the Empires of the East, which currently produces these RCs. I've got you guys a special 15% discount code. Check the video description. You will also be able to get this one with two batteries. Normally, this comes with only one battery. Battery. For $90, you're gonna get this and two batteries. Make sure you check that link. These things have a 550 size motor and it really sucks up the juice from your battery. So it's really in your best interest to get one with the two batteries. And yes, I will be unboxing this soon. This video is not about this. I just wanted to show you guys. They ship relatively fast. Sometimes they are sold out. These are so hot and new that I'm lucky myself to be able to get it. Let's get back to the Savage. Time to fire up the Big Block Savage for the first time. I got my own 20% nitro fuel. We have the Roto Start. We have the Lithium Polymer Dynamite Glow Driver. And of course, the regular 2.4 gigahertz radio came with. First thing I gotta put on the car, the radio system. I am still using the included receiver pack. I do have another one coming right now, but for now we're gonna be using the included one. Hopefully it will last just so I could even start this thing up. This is the battery indicator. It does say that it is fully charged right now, but these older style batteries just basically don't have much capacity. Got some fuel in there, 20% nitro. I did clean the entire fuel system, uh, I checked the fuel filter, I checked the fuel lines, the fuel tank seems to be fairly well pressurized, the seal was okay, hopefully it's got enough back pressure to pull fuel into the system. Alright, I'm going to start and prime this a little bit. Alright. Okay. I just saw fuel enter the fuel line. That's a good indicator that the system is well sealed and this thing should start up. Of course, the first start is always not that easy. All right, here we go. Oh, good sign, that was a good sign. Heard a little bit of a brap. It seems my Rotostar battery is a little on the weak side. It's having a hard time spinning over this giant K5.9 motor. Let's try again. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Man, this thing is really, really loud. It's a decibel meter. That's a good sign. I have the carb set back to the factory needle settings in case you guys were wondering. It's really rich, really, really rich. Oh, 
up. I got too many kids, too many kids. <laughs> Right, you saw that one flip and then one breakage this is like the ultimate durability test all it takes is one flip but I gotta say it's not done in the world it's just one of these links that's holding on this rear tie rod onto the wheel but this is actually a common thing when I read some of the savage forums everybody said these things were extremely weak and they always snapped at the back so no guys I don't have four-wheel steering this is just a broken tie rod in the back I'm gonna order up one of these and I'm gonna bash this thing good in the previous a savage reader asked you what car I was sitting in and most of you got it right this is my smart 4-2 passion I love this car I actually consider this the cheap man's poor man's Porsche 911 this is a rear engine rear wheel drive mostly manual although it does have paddle shifters car that has direct steering what that means it got no power steering basically if you look at this thing on paper this is like a 1970s 60s Porsche 911 or some other Porsche I'm not too familiar with the Porsche naming system they're just very complicated but guys I like to drive this car because it's cool and it saves me a lot of money why because I have a little bit of a nitro RC problem check this out yep you're looking at two Traxxas Revos 3.3. Thanks so much to my friend Joe Cam for hooking me up with a deal. You're gonna see this on my channel again pretty soon. They are in what I like to call Joe Cam condition, meaning nearly spotless and new from the factory. A lot of people think the Smart is a tiny car, and yes, it is a two-seater, but what's really the difference? You could fit two Traxxas Revo 3.3s in here and then still close up this truck like catch. Look at that. Oh man, cool, look at that, top bottom. Look at that top portion right here, it's like a Chevy Tahoe. By the way, this car is also really cool because it does have staggered wheels. Now, of course, the front tires are very thin, but that's only because it has no power steering. Do I have a problem with that? No, I got a car with staggered wheels. This is like a Porsche right here. Just like a Saab, the ignition barrel is on the floor. This car has a complete drive-by wire system. Let's listen to this tractor-like motor start. <laughs> Oh man, I felt those vibrations in the cabin. This is the shortest overall length car you can buy in America right now. They had to really develop a system that will be very user friendly and space efficient. I removed the front hood panel here. It's literally just a panel. It has a little mechanism here that holds it for you or you could fully remove it. All of the cooling components, the windshield washer fluid, the brake fluid is here in the front. What happens is the car constantly cycles through hoses on the bottom to cool the engine in the back. Very complicated and interesting engineering system. If you guys like cars, you really got to stop making fun of the Smart 4 too. A lot of interesting engineering decisions were made here. A lot of people get cold air intakes for their Hondas. Smart don't need one. It's got a side air intake. Congratulations to everybody that passed the car trivia question. And it was actually most of you. I'm frankly surprised. This is a pretty rare car. Just out here chilling, having a nice seltzer. There's no vodka in here. Let me have a good time now. See you later.